Hi everyone, I'm thriller author J.F. Penn and today I'm here with best-selling thriller author Keith Raffle. Hi Keith! Hi Joanna, good to see you uh, all the way across the Atlantic. Yes, indeed, that's why I love doing these videos. So um, I think we share a British heritage, so why don't you start by telling us a bit about your background? Well, I'm, I think my British heritage is not quite as strong as yours. Um, after I graduated from college, though, I spent two years in, in two of the best years of my life at Oxford. That was wonderful. Uh, I, I'm talking to you now from Palo Alto, California, which is the heart of Silicon Valley, where many Facebook started here. Mark Zuckerberg lives down the street. Hewlett Packard is, is located here and was here when I grew up. So I grew up in, in Palo Alto when it was a town... Uh, filled with orchards. It, uh, no one locked their doors. People would dry apricots every summer. I'll tell you, it's way different now. <laughs> wow. So you did you start off in the, in the IT business? Or, you know, what, what is your background before writing? So, um, so um, you know, I, I have real trouble, Joanna, keeping a job. <laughs> so let me think. I've worked as a, I've worked as a carpenter. I've worked teaching writing to college freshmen. I've worked as um, as counsel to the Senate Intelligence Committee. I ran for the House of Representatives out here in Silicon Valley. Kerplop, I lost. Um, I, I worked in a, in a high tech company. Um, I supported myself at the racetrack for a few for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a, it's a, it's a funny background. Then I start, and then I started an internet company, which um, which was pretty successful. Uh, and lastly, until the end of June, I was I was sequencing DNA here in Silicon Valley. Wow! Now, now for five weeks now, I've been a full time author. Wow! Oh well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Ho hopefully, you'll keep this a bit longer. <laughs> it, it, it's not, well. The great thing about being a writer is that. Um, uh, you can always, first of all, you can always go back to it. And second of all, when you have a job, you're always watching everybody and keeping notes on what they're doing. Oh, yeah. I'm, you, sure, you've seen, I, I'm sure you've seen that uh, T-shirt that says, uh, watch out. If you're not good to me, I'll kill you in my next book. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you've had, I mean, you've obviously been in some amazing uh, places, you know, fascinating jobs. And you've worked in the intelligence community that you mentioned and the, and the political arena. So how do those themes come out in your books? Well, you know, I, I, I wrote one book called Drop by Drop, which was really um, where I tried to get back to what it was like working in Washington. And it had been a number of years I was really concerned about being able to put myself back into the um, into the paranoia that was Washington, D.C. Um, you know, there's a famous there's a famous saying here in Silicon Valley that um, from Andy Grove, longtime CEO of Intel, where he said only the paranoid survive. Um and in Washington, D.C., there was a similar saying that, sa that said, everyone in Washington is paranoid. There is always someone out to get you. Uh, and, and I, and I, so I tried to put myself back to what it was like being in Washington. I went to the corner cafe where I do my writing. I put on my noise-canceling headset. Uh, I started drinking my green tea. And almost magically, as if there were some sort of time portal, I was back in D.C. in no time. Yeah, I, I felt I felt like I was there again, and, and with each cup of tea, I got more and more there. It was it, it was a terrific experience, and, and writing that book um, brought me back to uh, early in my career when I was counsel to the Senate Intelligence Committee. Yeah, wow! So that's drop by drop that book. People should yes. check that out for some behind the scenes gossip disguised as fiction. <laughs> Joanna, I think it's almost backwards. I think people always always are saying. Is the book really about you? Are you really the main character of such and such a book? Whereas I think, and, I, and I'm sure you feel this way a little bit too, it's the other way around. It's not that the main character of my books is me. It's that in writing them, I become the main character. Mm. No, that's a good. That's a good way of putting it. Um, but and also, you've mentioned Silicon Valley there, and um, have you used that setting for your books as well? All my books seem to start out in Silicon Valley. My first two were mysteries or thrillers set right right here in Silicon Valley. People have a good time with them because they try to guess who each person in the in the book is. Uh, they're familiar places, and I tried to infuse it with what it was really like 
uh, being here in Silicon Valley. In my first, in my first book, um, which I had a great time writing, uh, we have a, a go-getter in his early 30s. All he cares about is IPOs, getting promoted, etc. One day he looks down, he has a big meeting in the afternoon, and he's wearing one brown and one blue sock. He goes home to, 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 I don't know whether he's looking for another brown or another blue sock, but he goes home and, um, and goes into his, uh, into his bedroom, into his bureau, and there is a beautiful blonde woman stabbed to death on, in his bed. The, um, he, of course, he calls the police like a good boy should. Um, the police ask if he's ever met her. Uh, he says, of course, no. Uh, the police are back a few hours later and, and, and say, you know, it's funny you say you never met her. Her family says you were dating. He's in big trouble. Oh, well, and what's that book called? That book is called Doc Dead. Doc Dead. Oh, right. That's very cool. Like dot com. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's excellent. But it didn't work out. It didn't work, work out quite as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's a dot com boom and bust cycle, isn't there? Um, I live. Yes, I lived through it. Yeah, fantastic. Now, you have a uh, your latest book. Now, you seem to be jumping around quite a lot because your latest book, A Fine and Dangerous Season, is a historical thriller. Is that right? It is a, it is a historical thriller. Um, let me let me tell you what, what happened. I, I live in Palo Alto. I grew up here. I grew up here as well. Um, something that I didn't know until relative till a few years ago was that John Fitzgerald Kennedy, uh, our our for our president, um, actually went to Stanford for a quarter for a term in the fall of 1940. Um, he was, a, he, he's not an official alumnus of Stanford because he was, uh, he was a special student. He was just there to audit some classes. Who knew he was there? So of course, um, like you, like every, like every thriller writer, you start asking, what if, mm. what if he met someone in the fall of 1940? What if 22 years later during the Cuban Missile Crisis, he needed that person's help to keep the world from blowing up? And I was off and running. Which is also, and it brings in your political side as well, I guess. Um, yeah, it, 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 it sure it sure did, and I had such a great time researching that book. I went back to um, the Kennedy Presidential Library in Boston, Massachusetts. I brought my my oldest daughter with me, and she was my research assistant. She was looking up this and looking up that, and um, but the one thing she wanted to see for certain was uh, President Kennedy's Harvard. Report, uh, report card. He wanted to see um, his grades because she was at the time was going to Harvard as well, hmm. and she would look at his his grades and say, "I got a better grade in that class than he did." <laughs> That's brilliant. So that that does kind of tell us a bit about your process. So in your writing process, do you do a lot of research? Um, I th I think I, I think I try to do research um, sort of as as required. Um, in that particular book, in that particular book, I did more than I, I do most of the time. But if, if something's set in, in, in current times, like the, the two books that were set right here in Silicon Valley the whole time, I'd lived it. I knew it. The book that, um, the book that I mentioned before, Drop by Drop, I'd been in D.C. I could put myself back in that time, although I spent a lot of time in D.C. sort of walking through rooms and hotel rooms to make sure I got the architecture right. But um, the, the book that I'm working on now, which is called uh, Temple Mount, Yes, I went to Jerusalem, and I had to do quite a bit of research before I could do that book. So it varies. I do as much as I do as much as required, but I try not to get um, too lost in the research. Mm, well, I love Jerusalem as well. We have that in common. I've been eleven times now. I love it so much. Did you enjoy it? Um, I, you know, I, I love going there. I went for the first. I went for the first time. I've always wanted to go, and I, I kept asking members of my family, "Who wants to go to Jerusalem?" And finally, my then nine-year-old son said, "I'll go," and we were off. And we were off, and we went. And I knew I wanted to write a thriller set in Israel, and we just went from place to place um, mm -hmm. until finally I said, until finally we found one place. I asked a question, and within five seconds, uh, the plot just unrolled in my mind. Mm, and that, and I, I have uh, Jerusalem and Israel in every single one of my books as well. So um, it, it's one of those loves for me too. And, and I, I've looked at a Temple Mount is about the, um, the Ark of the Covenant, I believe. Yes, yeah, so and we have that in common as well. We do. My book Exodus is about that. So t tell us a bit, a bit more about the plot of, of your book. 
so this is a book that's not out yet, but uh, one that I'm working on. So uh, I was I was walking I was walking through a tunnel underneath un- underneath the hotel the, the the western wall where I'm sure you've been, and there was there was huge stone after huge stone, but then in the middle of all those stones there was a round circle that would look like it was plugged with cement with concrete, and I said, "What is this?" And they said, "Oh, this is a little embarrassing." But thirty some years ago, we we discovered two rabbis. One of them was one of them, a, a fairly famous one, were drilling at night because they believed mm-hmm. the Ark of the Covenant was down there and had been hidden there for the last twenty seven hundred years. And and that and once I heard that, I said, "What if it's really there?" And I was off and running. Oh. It's that it's that what if that we all ask ourselves that gets the thrillers going. Mm. Well, then we've we've talked there about a lot of your books, and they're all quite different. So, are, are there any themes that run through all of them that you feel are sort of themes in your life? Um. Well, do you know, it, it, it's I think it's a little embarrassing, but sometimes I get asked the question, you know, "What writer has inspired you?" <laughs> and the and the answer I think isn't so much so much a writer. It's a movie director. It's Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock's great films are about a man or a woman who's just leading a typical middle class life, and all of a sudden something happens, something drastic happens. They're thrust into an emergency dealing with spies or murderers or, or, or some such. And the question is whether that ordinary person can rise up and meet the challenge. That's what I love writing about in all my books. Mm, fantastic and I mean I, I love re- I love learning things as well and it sounds like all your books you've got interesting things that people can learn as well yeah I, I do and I think that all my you know the protagonists in my books um sometimes I, I'm not sure that they, they they think about what they're doing and and and, and sometimes there's a little distinct they don't think that doing the right thing is so important and yet they always do the right thing so I think another theme in the books is Watch what the protagonist does and not what he or she says. Mm, absolutely. And you did mention um, a bit there that, you know, we turn into the characters. And I, I always like to ask thriller writers, you know, are you as exciting as the characters you write? And obviously you've traveled, but are, are there any other exciting things we should know about you? We're just, I'm just the same as those characters, except for a, a, a few differences. They're all better looking smarter, braver, and more attractive to women. <laughs> Except for that, I'm just like them. Yeah, and my uh, my protagonist is really good at Krav Maga, you know, the Israeli martial arts. Oh, me too. No, I have, I have Krav Maga. I have a female protagonist who does Krav Maga in, um, in Drop by Drop. There we go. Look, we've got, we've got a writer brain connect going on here, haven't we? I think it, it is it is fascinating how we we sometimes give our characters kind of a bit, bit more superpowers. Um, but um, so you mentioned a bit about your research process. But what is I mean you had a, other jobs until recently. So what what is your writing process like? Uh, so I, I'm talking to you from uh, a, a very from, from you can see my, the books in the background from my office and in, in my house. We, we put on an addition here because like so many writers, who are, I'm really a reader as well, and we just ran out of bookshelf space. So I convinced my wife, um, let's go build a little addition to the house so I can have a place to write and I can keep have all my books around me. And she, um, good sport that she is, said yes. But it turns out when I tried to write here, um, I can't. Uh, I saw an interview with Laura Lippman, the well-known uh, thriller mystery writer, and, and she was asked, what's the biggest enemy to getting your books done? And she said, laundry. <laughs> Something similar happens to me when I'm home. Um, there are all these things to do. I can be checking email, answering the telephone, um, leaping through books, etc. So instead, I walk five or ten minutes to a corner cafe where they know me. Um, I, I, I sit, I sit down there. I have my own special stash of green tea that they bring me. They turn down, uh, the music that's playing over my head. I put on noise canceling headphones. And, um, as I said a moment ago, within minutes, I'm, I'm off in, in, in Washington DC during the Cuban Missile Crisis or, 
um, down in the catacombs in the Soviet Union, Union watching uh, my uh, my partner practice Krav Maga or whatever. So mm-hmm. I, I have to ride at the cafe. And by the way, the most important thing about that cafe is that I do not have an internet connection when I'm there. Mm-hmm. If I do have an internet connection, I start doing some research. I say, gee, I wonder if Third Avenue is uh, run from is one way south to north or north to south. And I stop to look that up. And I'll tell you, ten minutes later, I'm I'm busy reading a biography of of some ancient Egyptian pharaoh. <laughs> yeah, the internet it's it's a bit of a t- can be a time suck. Um, but you mentioned there uh, about all your books. You've got all these bookshelves of books, and uh, I wondered, you know, who are your favorite writers? You know, thriller writers to read for pleasure. Well, you know, I just I think that the, I think my my favorite American thriller writer. It's someone who's who's not that well remembered now, but I just read another book of his, and I and I just and and I just I'm in awe of of what he does, and that's someone named Ross Thomas, who died who died 30 years ago. But each of his books seems topical. Each of his books, uh, he, he's extremely cynical about the about American labor unions, the American political process. Um, he, he writes about uh, people who find themselves in situations they can't believe who who triumph over over them all. They're hard bitten, yet um, yet yet they do the right they do the right thing anyway. And I just wish more people would be reading Ross Thomas. But in any case, uh, at least I, I have a chance to give him a plug here and talking to you, Joanna. Yeah, well, fantastic. The other one, and the reason I mentioned Ross Thomas first because it's a little embarrassing to mention anyone else. But if I said something like. Um, Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy is the best thriller I've ever read. I mean, it, it, I'll bet you 25% of our colleagues would say the same thing. So <laughs> talking about Le Carre seems almost like a cliche. Yeah, well, no, I mean, actually nobody else has mentioned him yet. So, you know, that's a, that's a first for our killer thriller series. <laughs> But um, no, that's fantastic. So, do, and, and I've got to ask you there because I read on the Kindle. Um, so, do you do you uh, are you into ebooks at all? So um, I'm not sure. I, I guess when it comes um, when it comes to reading, I'm a bit of a hermaphrodite. You can see be- you can see behind me that I have um, that I have a lot of uh, traditional paper and ink books. But yes, I I, um, I have my I have, I have my I have my Kindle right here as well, and, and, and so I do, I read both ways. Certainly, when I'm traveling, I only use my Kindle. I had a great trip. Um, I had a great trip to France with my uh, with my oldest daughter, who's who's was twenty three years old. Her birthday's intervening now; she's twenty four, and um, and I read, um, of course, on my Kindle some seminal mysteries. I was in France; how could you not? And we also visited the Normandy invasion beaches, and I read the longest day on my Kindle there too. Oh, that's fantastic! So, and it sounds like you're a bit of a, a bit of a traveller. Um, Got to ask you, apart from Jerusalem, where where is the most kind of awe inspiring place that you've travelled to? Well, do you, you, um, do you know that there was a song? Is that Crosby, Stills and Nash? If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. So I, I love the last place I was at. No matter what, no matter what, I've never been to Normandy before. Always wanted to go, and. In terms of awe-inspiring, looking at those Normandy beaches, looking at what um, the uh, uh, British, Canadian, and American forces had had to do um, to to uh, free France, uh, defeat uh, defeat the Nazis, um, looking at the um, cemeteries with that the, those rows and rows of crosses and stars, um, it, 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 it gets me right. Um, uh, I'm not sure whether it's in my belly or my heart, but uh, it, it was really awe-inspiring. In fact, I'm, I'm reading up on World War II now. I'd like to do something with it, but I'm not sure what. Well, I, I was going to say to you, because I'm the same, pretty much anywhere I go, I want to write a book about it. <laughs> so that's fantastic. So where can people find you and your books online? So, uh, uh, of course, I'm in, I'm, I'm in both um, the... Uh, Amazon doc, at both Amazon.com and, and BarnesandNoble.com and Kobo.com. Um, I have four books, uh, four books out with a, with a fifth book uh, with a fifth book coming. I would love it if people would come and visit my website, which is KeithRaffle.com. You spell my name K E I T H R A two S like in Frank E L.
Com. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks ever so much for your time, Keith. That was great. Joanna, it was nice to uh, meet you online. I look forward to meeting you face-to-face -face sometime somewhere.